Butterfly Fellowship. My name is Susan, and it is so exciting that you are here with us to what? Receive! Receive! Oh my goodness, I am so excited that we are in this series. Like, I was here, you'll see, um, at the taping for this first teaching, and it was lit! It is gonna be lit! And I know if you are new here, Welcome, we here at Search Light, we value relationships and we value learning and we value God's word, of course. And if you're here just to explore and to learn more and, and you are curious about what God's word says and who he is and what it would be like to receive from him, then you are in the right place and you are gonna absolutely receive. Um, and so I am so excited. So we start the fellowship first with some prayer and after that we're gonna get into the word so if you would all close your eyes or bow your heads and if you're at home um you can even kneel something really awesome to uh be on your knees and to receive that way even so uh if you want to try that you can uh so let's do that right now um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for who you are, God. You are an amazing God. You are a magnificent God. You are a kind, generous, loving God, full of grace and full of mercy. You are not a God that makes bad things happen or tries to test us or punish us. Um, you are not that kind of God. And I am so ready to receive all the love and joy and um, peace that you have uh, to give us today. Cria et rea se le leve brea, in a cara de breache, in le criita sebe, in naza e crea, a cura va leve breandre se, in naza e cereve breoshe e. Father, you are more than amazing, willing, and able, powerful. There's not enough words to describe your ability, Father. There's not enough to, words to describe how amazing and wonderful you are. Nothing can contain you, Father. You are love. You are filled with grace for us. Your love overflows like a fountain in a way that is beyond what we can think or imagine for us, God. I'm reminded of a verse in Ephesians where it says, Awake, O sleeper. And it reminds me of when um, I wake up my kids in the morning. I'm like, wake up, CPA. It's time to get up or get ready for the day. Um, and I just get that God is, is saying, to each of us it's it's time to arise it's time to um in many in different areas in our lives where it's like we're sleeping you know where our, we're not our eyes are not wide awake and, and aware and god's saying this is the, this is the journey now it's time to arise and, and have the lord shine the light on on these areas where it feels dark you know when we close our eyes it's dark right and so he's saying open your eyes i want you to see the wonders that i've created for you i want you to see the the adventure that i have for you and 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 even just looking at yourself in the mirror i want you to have eyes to see who the the beautiful creation that i made in you that you are loved and you are valued and you are worth it you are worth uh my son dying for you my because my love for you is deep and my love for you is unconditional and so we're able to have the courage to uh, sometimes it's scary. It's, it's, you know, a lot of times we just want to stay sleeping, you know, and, and he's saying, no, I, I, it's time to open your eyes and have the, the courage with my son to have, uh, to walk hand in hand with him and in this life and, and where he's taking you and on this adventure, because you're not alone in any of this. Amen. And now we're going to hear some happenings here at Searchlight. First and foremost, it's great to see you guys. Hopefully you guys are excited to embark on this incredible journey of Receive. There's so many great things that are in store for you guys. Now, before you guys do, I want you guys to pull up your mobile phone. That's right, pull up your mobile phone and visit the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Why? Well, because I want you guys to download the Searchlight Fellowship app. That's right, Searchlight Fellowship has a mobile app for you to download. There's a lot of great goodies in there for you. Weekly discussions, things that are gonna help you get better at receiving. Some of those things would be like meditations. There's also ways for you to submit prayer requests in there as well. Watch past teachings as well, get teaching notes. Stay up to date with the latest and greatest content at Searchlight Fellowship. So get connected with great content and great people through the Searchlight mobile app. Feel free to download that mobile app today. You can't start this ride without it. Okay, 
Now that you're downloading that mobile app, one of the things that you do not want to miss out on is our Searchlight Fellowship Guided Meditations. These are short, snackable meditations that you can put on, push play, and help you to receive from God and experience the presence of God through juicy prayer and meditation. You do not want to miss out on this. These are going to be really, really important because you're going to get to see God and experience God in much bigger ways than you've ever experienced before. So, hey, check them out. Hey, one meditation a day, 15 minutes, really simple. Dive right in, experience God, experience his love. Dive into those meditations today. All right, everybody, sit back, enjoy, relax, get ready to receive. Here's our lead pastor, Nancy Burwood, with the word of God. Sit back and enjoy. Are you guys excited to be here? Yeah! All right. Welcome to this series on Receive. Oh my goodness. Welcome. If this is your first time, super excited that you're here. Now, why would we do a series on Receive? Because you'd think that was easy. Mm. Wouldn't you? I mean, you're like, eh, I don't have a problem receiving. <laughs> I don't know. But, but think about this. Uh, how many of you guys struggle with receiving? Uh, yeah. ah, funny, right? Yeah. Isn't that wild? Because you wouldn't think it would be hard. <laughs> like, wow. So this is the reason that we have this series. Think about this. So let's say um, people give you a compliment mm. and you just go, oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> right? <laughs> or, right? Or, or somebody gives you a gift and you're like, you didn't have to. Do you know people say that all the time when they give them stuff? Oh, you didn't have to. I know I didn't have to. It's a gift. <laughs> or, or people, when you give them a gift, they're like, oh, crap. I got, I got to get something of equal value <laughs> to get back. So it feels like a trade instead. So it's kind of wild that it's so hard to receive. And on top of it, we get a lot of messages um, that in the world we're bombarded with things that where everything's got to kind of come from within ourselves. It's not really, you know, like about receiving. And so, for instance, why do people struggle? Sometimes people feel, okay, that they need to deserve something Mm -hmm. to receive it. Sometimes people feel like, oh, then I'll be too needy or too dependent. And if that's kind of a scary thing, you know? So there's all kinds of reasons why we have some guards in this relating to receiving. Um, and so we're going to look at that clearly. How fun is this? We're going to have nine weeks to work on receive. Oh, yeah. And so we want to, it's kind of funny. Like, I really like our little picture. Uh, <laughs> we want to be like this guy, you know, like where there's enthusiasm and embracing receiving this kind of reminds like, cause God's got so much to give in the series. We're going to really look at the fact that God wants us to receive from him and to be filled up from him. Uh, And we need to receive. It's really important. If we don't, then you burn out. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. you get um, tired and exhausted and all kind of things. You know, when you're little kids, like Christmas morning, you don't struggle with receiving. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know? I mean, you don't go... Oh, do we have to go downstairs? We want to be like that. We're we're like charging downstairs, ripping the packages. And so that's why this is kind of cute because it kind of reminds me of that same enthusiasm that we can have now. And when it comes to the things of God that God wants us to have. And they're pretty great as far as some of uh, what God would want us to have. So let's take a look. Um, One of the ways in the... um, in math, uh, and it's okay if you don't know your way around it, you can just sneak a peek at whoever's next to you. Um, it's kind of, it's the first book of the New Testament, and Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, I don't know how to say it backwards, uh, Malachi is before Matthew, um, Matthew chapter 7, and in verse 7, I mean, some of how you find start finding your way around is by just being with somebody else, see, and see that works too, help the person next to you to find it. Uh, it's great. One of the ways that we got our name, Searchlight Fellowship, uh, there's a couple of ideas behind it, but we're really big believers in seeking. So if you are not somebody that believes in God yet, I'm so excited that you're here. Mm-hmm. Seeking is so powerful. I was raised an atheist. So um, I really am a big believer in when you seek, 
you will find kind of a thing. And so we just want to be in a place, especially on something where our needs are great. Why not just have a little openness to receive and see what the possibilities are? Um, so based on that, and this verse relates to receiving also, and it's kind of our theme verse for this. Oops, I'm in Mark. You guys are all ahead of me. Uh, Matthew 7 and in verse 7, it says, ask and it will be what? Given, Given to you. Seek and you will find. find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. So oh, it's amazing what God is able to do when we come with just a little seeking kind of a thing and openness. And, you know, if you came here, I'm assuming it's because maybe there's some things that aren't quite working and, and, you came to explore, and that is really an honorable thing. You know, if you want something different, try something different. <laughs> and maybe it's because you heard some friends who said that their lives radically changed in just allowing themselves to receive from God and from Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, oh, I like that. That person's has their lives changed really radically. So anyway. Uh, so we want to just be in a place during this time of just kind of stepping out and seeking a little bit. Um, I want to also go to another one in Jeremiah. It's kind of a little bit in the middle of your Bible. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah uh, 2, and in verse uh, 13. Because here's the issue with, if we're not receiving, here's what the big problem is. We're finite beings. Mm -hmm. So if we're constantly looking to us for everything, and, and this is, we've had, now when I talk about the world conditioning, do you know how much the word self is in everything these days? Self-reliance, self-made, right? Um, even self-love, like, come on. I mean, I, it's like the Bible speaks about receiving love and yet the world's teaching. It's about you trying to pull it out from yourself. No wonder you're exhausted from that. Like, you know, it's, we are finite vessels, which is part of the problem and why we need to receive. God actually designed us to need to be filled up outside of ourselves. Wow. Right. I mean, have you noticed you're limited? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh good, I'm not in a room full of really crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's good to kind of realize that, mm -hmm. you know, where you come to the end of yourself. And that actually, for me, that led me into a place of seeking, is realizing I'm not doing the greatest, doing it all by myself. And yet, it seems like we are expected not to need anything from anybody else, right? Even forgive yourself. My gosh, there's so many self words out there, right? It's just like, it's a lot. So this is a big reason why receiving is really important. And, and we can learn to receive in a way that we're safe. You know, I do know, and, and this is, could be another part of the guards is sometimes when people give, it's not really a gift. There's strings attached, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's more of a, and, and, and that's a, understandably a struggle of being guarded because mm -hmm. so often people aren't really giving free gifts. Mm -hmm. They're like, they get mad back at you. Like, mm -hmm. I thought you'd do blah, blah. And you're like, you know, mm -hmm. that's a struggle kind of a thing. But God's never like that when it comes to his gifts and giving. So let's look at Jeremiah 2, and in verse 13, um, God speaking, he says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So God's saying, gosh, he wants so much more for us. God's saying he is a fountain of living water. Wow. For one, a fountain is just this endless supply, not limited, where it just keeps giving. That's the visual. And it's water that's alive, right? That restores the fountain of living waters. But not only have we gone, okay, I'm not going to the fountain of unlimited supply, but I'm, I'm making myself, a cistern is a jar. So it's a jar, but not even 
like, a, would you rather have a jar like for your supply? Cause that's really what we are. When we rely on ourselves, we're a sister mm. and a broken sister. <laughs> We're cracked. No. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, no, but think about it. So it's a jar with a limited supply to start with. And when there's a crack in it, then the water's leaking out. So we keep choosing this when God's like, I have it to give, you know? And so some of this is just trying to step into experiencing and allowing ourselves to receive from God during this series. Mm -hmm. It is just like mind blowing what is possible. I've seen it for my own life in, in many, many areas. Like the area of relationships was really broken <laughs> in my life. I mean, this is just one of the big places. Like God wants you to have like amazing relationships. He wants you to, to really see your purpose fulfilled. He wants you to be free to be who you were made to be instead of people pleasing and trying to be what other people want you to be, to come into your uniqueness. God's got all of that. That's the fountain of living waters where God, you know, wants to bring you into that. For me, I mean, so many areas of my life, it's a process of where I've let God into my life in certain ways. Like when I got saved, I was um, I had been an, an atheist my whole life, but I was depressed and suicidal. And so the first thing of just like somebody told me about Jesus and his love and the first time that I accepted Jesus and believed that he loved me and it just, I went from depression to joy. It was so overnight. It was ridiculously miraculous. I've never felt depressed even for a moment since that day. Like, come on. That's like insane and a wonderful insane <laughs> figure speech, figure speech. So, um, uh, so that was incredible in terms of where I let God in, in that way. And then, um, but because I had had a childhood that was really abusive and was sexually abused as a child. So I was really messed up in the area of relationships. So I kept getting into these really toxic relationships. I know not any of you guys have experienced that. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you look like you believe me for a second. <laughs> I know it's a common thing, right? I mean, not everybody, but it's an area that many people experience great hurt for many, many years. And so I was in that space for such um, a long, long time. And so it took me a while to get where I'm like, the way I'm doing it isn't working where I allowed God into my life in that way, which I'll, I'll share more about later, but it's just like, but it's amazing. Like I've been like happily married 23 years in love. That's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how excited. I mean, this to me is like, it was inconceivable like coming from where I came from and also years and years and years of being stuck in this, mm -hmm. as soon as I just was seeking and allowing myself to be open to God in this place and stop going to the cistern and going to the fountain of living waters. Mm -hmm. Like, and I've seen that for my friends too. Like Susan, I've known for like many years and she also, her and her husband both like struggled in terrible, terrible. relationships for many years and they're happily married for 13 years and really in love too. I mean, it's crazy. Like, like I've seen this over and over and over and over again. So I'm just saying, I've never seen this not work. Okay. When neg double, triple negative, <laughs> whatever that was, but it's so this, I'm just encouraging you and probably because of the friends who brought you, like this is worth stepping in and just um, spending some time. We're going to talk about how in receiving from God. Um, cause a lot of times people relate to God in funky ways. Like you have to deserve it, mm -hmm. right? Like how many people think like, for instance, prayer, like where prayer seems anybody ever had really boring, crappy prayers. <laughs> yeah. Where you felt like you're doing it because you're supposed to do it. There's no receiving involved in that, right? Like it's, if anything, I've spent many years where my prayers were just repeating all the things I'm worried about. <laughs> There's no receiving in that. And it's, God's got so much more for us than that. So anyway, we want to go to the fountain of living waters. Let's go to um, another one in Matthew. We'll go back to Matthew again, where this is Jesus speaking. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Matthew 11 and a verse 28. 
Jesus is speaking and he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. It's way that heavy. Do, uh, can anybody relate to the heavy laden feeling of feeling weighed, right? Like it's just, you're working and working and you're carrying the load by yourself, right? And it can be crushing at times, right? Relating in that do, do, do. And does it ever feel like there's not like where you've done enough? No, like when you're relating like that, it's kind of endless, right? It's like, it's like no matter what I do or how hard I try, it just keeps going and going. So, uh, but Jesus is saying, come to him. Now, that's, it, and it says, I will give you what? Rest. rest. And all it says, come to Jesus, he will give you rest. So we're going to be looking at this series because the Bible says that we can have fellowship with God and with the Lord Jesus Christ, that in just coming and being in the presence of the Lord, that there is rest. Jesus says, <laughs> take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly at, in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So yoke, this is just one of my favorite passages of scripture. So a yoke is a, like a metal collar that would link oxen together. So it was a part of an agricultural um, society that was common. So the figure of speech, normally a yoke you think of as being heavy, right? But Jesus is saying when we link with him, when we yoke with him, that it's light. Mm -hmm. So all it is, is coming to not do it by ourselves, but including Jesus in it, which we'll talk about how and what that looks like is very easy, it says, and light, right? That there's rest in it. And it's crazy. I'm going to walk you through some ways to just try this, but in an instant, it changes. Like even through the day, this changes as we um, just say, I'm not doing it by myself, you know? Okay. Now, so we talked about prayer. Do you know Jesus, like he's famous for healing thousands, right? Like one of the things they talked about, multitudes came and it says everyone was healed. There were no like, not for you, you know, <laughs> there was none of that. Like, um, you didn't pray enough, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, like he, he healed everyone who came to him. Now that's kind of, he was busy, yeah. right? He was like throngs of people all day. Now, in order to do that kind, like that volume of things, guess what? Jesus needed to pray. Wow. He needed to receive. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't try and do it as a finite system himself. He didn't go, well, I'm just Jesus. And so <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't do that. Mm -hmm. He got filled up by God. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's take a look. In Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, and in verse five, I mean, chapter five, Luke. Um, five, okay. <laughs> and in verse 15, however, the report went around concerning him all the more. This is talking about Jesus. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So, so, because of this, he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Now, Jesus needed to receive before he had it to give. Jesus needed to seek being in the presence of the creator of life, God, to be filled up in order. So... <laughs> You think you can do what you can, what you need to do, right? You do know what I'm saying? Like you got a lot that you got on your plate. It's just sort of, you know, it's just funny. It's, it's prayer is a place to be receiving. I'm going to talk to you about how to be in a different place where it's not depleting. It's not blah, but where you really do experience the fullness of being in the presence of God. Let's go to Luke uh, <laughs> Six and a verse 12. Here's another one on the same topic. It says, Now it came to pass in those days that he, Jesus, went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer. 
I've only done this, I think, once or twice, and I was much younger. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, wow. Like, to be in a place of him being aware of his need to be filled up by the Father, right? Why do we minimize that? I don't know. You know what I mean? I do it. You know, where I'm just like, I get, any time I get in my mind, I've got too much to do. Mm -hmm. Like, right? Mm -hmm. To not... I call it stop and drop, like being in the presence of the Lord. Like, it, uh, sometimes I can go, Nancy, stop and drop, stop and drop, you know, like, yeah. because I'm really, I'm a doer. I think most of us are. Like, we get a mindset, you are. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, you know, it's like, do, 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 right? And it's just sort of like, man, it makes it light when we spend time getting filled up. And that's how Jesus was able to. It was like a bigger deal than sleep. Not that sleep is unimportant, but quite frankly, you know, um, I mean, when I have spent a lot of time in the presence of the Lord, then sleep, a little bit of sleep goes a long way. Um, I'm also a proponent of sleep. Uh, but <laughs> I think that's a good thing. Uh, but anyway, he, he did, it wasn't just symbolic. Do you know, I, it's just funny, like, Nobody was watching as he stayed up all night. You know what I mean? It's just like, um, anyway. Okay. Um, let's go to, uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's go to Philippians 4. And uh, Ephesians, Philippians, Philippians 4. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians 4. Oops. And in... Um, Verse six, it says, be anxious for nothing. So, I mean, I was just talking to somebody today that has had many people have had issues with anxiety that was paralyzing, right? Um, ha having attacks. We, I was talking in the last series, one of our fabulous, uh, we've had a lot of people healed from anxiety, but just, you know, one of our newer people in the fellowship had spent years in completely paralyzing anxiety attacks, went to therapist, nothing changed. They just told him how to manage it. And then God healed him and he's never had, it's been almost a year. Wow. And after years of having that, no, this is how big it is that God can do this when we're in a place of receiving. It makes sense if you're trying to do everything from within, of course, why wouldn't you have anxiety? You're expecting that of yourself? Yeah. Like, honestly, not that big of a stretch to struggle in that way when that's when we're relating. But it says, be anxious for nothing, but, but in contrast, in everything, in everything that we do, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made, be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Wow. Think about that. Like, so, like peace that passes all understanding is available, you guys. Wow. Like, I've seen it. I've, ugh, I, I see this over and over. It happens every single moment that we set our eyes in receiving from God and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So it makes sense in everything. And I'm working on doing this even through the day right now. Like, because I'll notice, like, I'll have this fabulous time in prayer, which definitely helps a lot receiving. And then, but then through the day, sometimes I'll start, like, drifting off and start going, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, even in this moment, um, I think about, I always think about George Mueller, who says, I live in the spirit of prayer. Like, it being, having this mindfulness as soon as I do shift to go, wow, I'm not alone in this. God, you love me and you want to be there with me in this, that this isn't just on my strength, that it's just like the peace just, you know, and so anyway, uh, that we can do this. And it's interesting too, like supplication, it's, is, um, is making, is asking, seeking uh, with humility for our needs is what that in the Greek, um, that's the, the, um, the Greek word for supplication and Thanksgiving. Why is it like Thanksgiving as being a part of prayer, uh, helps us in, because we don't have to be thankful for everything. We shouldn't be, 
Um, there's many things to be like, I'm not thankful for that. Uh, I mean, because we've all gone through hard things. It's like, okay, I, and we're not expected to have thankful, be thankful for everything. Um, years ago I had cancer and that was, you know, it, it was hard. And so, but in this, it's, it's, it's interesting. Like this verse relates to me so much in that, but it helped my heart, you know, to be like, okay, what can I be thankful for? I can be thankful in this situation, not for the situation. And so it was super scary if anybody's, you know, gone through that. And I was just like, no, I have seen God be good. I can be thankful. It helped my believing. It helped me to know that God is for me, that I'm not alone in this, that I'm not just looking to me. Like, what could that do for me to look at me in this? Right? What can you do? <laughs> you know, but to look to God in this and to... Um, sometimes there's a temptation in bad times to pull away from God. And I'm like, I got too much on this. So in some ways I had to push myself to not just get swallowed up in it, but to go, no, I refuse. I got to seek God in this. And just to be in his presence, knowing he's brought me through these amazing things, like healed me from all of this childhood horror stuff that I went through, healed me in relationships to having a great marriage, like, he, he will be with me in this, right? And so that's what it's saying right here is like, for one, the Thanksgiving, you can be thankful for what he, he's already done. You can be thankful for just the promises in God's word. Like there's always things that can help you to be thankful specifically in God and his love for you and that he wants you healed. He wants you delivered. And um, so that helps. It says, in that being thankful, let your request be made known. And then, and then the peace of God, which passes understanding, it will guard your hearts. You know what? It, it guards your hearts. It protects your heart. It protected me from getting taken out with fear, you know, from getting like just consumed with it. I'm like, no, it's like grab a hold, stop and drop, Nancy, stop and drop. <laughs> so, um, uh, and it's amazing how, and I've seen it from my friends. I remember one, remember one, one of our friends who's, had been, you know, doing a lot of drugs themselves and were, would get taken out by even little teeny things. Mm -hmm. And then because they were, had been spending time just receiving from God in this and gotten healed and they weren't doing drugs anymore and just mm -hmm. like living in the joy of the Lord. Right. And it, the, their mom had been a hardcore alcoholic and disappeared and nobody knew where she was and she hadn't shown up for work. It was super scary. And he was like, had peace in this and was able to minister to his mom. His mom got sober. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, like, mm -hmm. this is what's possible is not only healing us, but that we can peacefully be there to help those that we love in, in a really, it's just, it happens. Oh, I've seen so many hundreds and hundreds of stories like this, mm -hmm. but, um, <clears throat> anyway, um, one more we'll go to in uh, Jeremiah 29, um, back towards the middle, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Um, kind of bouncing back and forth. Okay, Jeremiah 29, and in verse 11, it says, God speaking, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Man, that by itself, sometimes when I get in the presence of God, I'm like, he wants to listen to me. Like, uh, we're going to do a little meditation today and I'm going to talk to you about how, some of the how of receiving and, and being in the presence of God. But some of it is the creator of life. Think about it. If, and maybe you're not sure if God is real. But it could be a time to consider what if, what if we were talking about this earlier, right? Like what if there is a creator, this invisible being that made everything, if that's true, think about what it would be like that this entity would be for you, right? And wants to listen to you. And that's not so far fetched because any being that was so complex to make DNA, do you know what I mean? Like some of these things, right? It's not so far fetched would be able to listen to you, you know, and, and to know you and to know your heart and your thoughts, right? Like, 
you know what kind of peace there is just taking that in in a moment? I'm like, wow. Because this is the thing, what the, the thoughts God has. People, religion sometimes teaches things that are totally opposite God's word. And I was just talking to somebody earlier today, and it really sucks because she's a part of a church that was so toxic, that was super judgmental and controlling and like... Of course, like being teaching God is like hellfire and brimstone. Does that sound like this? I know the thoughts I have towards you, right? Of hope and a future. That's what God is saying to you. Like if this being is real and, and that's the heart of this being for you and, and that God wants to listen to you, to what's going on in your life, that it matters. Wow. So some of receiving is taking that in. So where prayer is not just talking at God, where it is something that you allow yourself to open your heart to receive and to hear from God, to be and experience the presence of this being. Um, we, we were seeing it in the last series towards the end. It was so exciting. People were praying for their friends and asking God to show them visions, right? Of the people that they love and where he wants to take them. And it was like really inspiring visions that you can learn to speak and listen to God in this. It says, uh, I will listen and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with your, all your heart. And I will be found by you says the Lord. And I will bring you back from your captivity. All of us at certain places have been captive emotionally, all kind of ways, like been in some kind of prisons. It could be in terms of our self-worth. It could be a prisons of fear. It could be prisons of anxiety or depression or prisons of, of feeling like you got to live up to everybody else's expectation of you, right? Prisons of, uh, I have to just keep working, working, doing more, doing more, all kind of things, right? So God wants to deliver you from all of that and it is possible in just spending time so the first thing that we're going to do in this receiving series there are some stretch goals through this series and each little stretch goal they're just little things right that are really the about receiving you know seeking and opening our heart to what is possible from god that we're not going to try and be cisterns that are all about relying on us anymore but we're going to go and just go to the fountain of living waters and just see what happens so a part of this is um we call it j juicy prayer and meditation so um actually you know what let me get the book out here um can somebody want to read the stretch goal we will do a meditation in a minute but i want to tell you a little bit about meditation before we do it um somebody want to read the stretch goal for week one yes Yes. <laughs> okay. Stretch goal for this week. Miracle alert. <laughs> Go to God who is the fountain of living water. Whatever part of your life has been empty, God can fill because he is a fountain of endless supply. God loves you lots. Cool. Yeah. Do the God is willing and able 15 minute meditations each day so you can begin to be filled by the fountain of living waters. Sweet. Okay. So what um, the stretch goal and hopefully you downloaded the app if you haven't, um, there's meditations on here. And so they, they have different topics and this is to just kind of make it easy because if you haven't done this on your own quite a bit, um, then it's just new, right? But it's a way to kind of help guide you into being in a place of receiving from God. And we call it juicy prayer meditation where it's fire prayer. <laughs> it's, uh, it's exciting and it's revitalizing. So one of the things um, that I encourage people to do, if you haven't done this before, is to start by getting on your knees. We're not going to do that in this moment because the space is too tight. But um, at home, like it's th this week, all you have to do is push play on the meditation thing and just get quiet. But I, it's helpful. The reason it's helpful to get on your knees, the Bible speaks about doing that is it helps you to be in a place of physically acknowledging your smallness. Do you know? Because we think of our, it helps us to get off of the do, do, do kind of thing and, and 
experience being in the vastness. If there's this being, this invisible being that made everything, we're talking about quite an entity. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy to think about that. Now, when I get on my knees, pretty much instantly, I, I can actually experience being in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. But it takes a little time, and so you want to be a little patient in this. But it's 15 minutes a day. So 15 minutes a day, can you manage that? No. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it's kind of crazy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is like, we're talking about burden and light. Mm -hmm. So, but just to try this, because what if it changes your life radically, mm -hmm. right? Like, and gets you out of that, that hamster wheel thing of being stuck and doing the same thing that's not working and just being and receiving. So it's 15 minutes, get on your knees, push play. The, the meditations are set up where it gives you some things to think about, you know, some scripture stuff. And then there's a period of some silence of asking God to speak to you. There's some questions to ask during them. So, um, that are on the recording that you can just ask God to show you things. So some of the things you can, um, in it are if you ask God to show you something and you get a little picture, most people are about, that wasn't God. <laughs> like, no, it's happened. I was just in the fellowship that you do on Thursdays and it was really funny because at the beginning people were like, they got these images and they're like, did anybody get anything? And they're like, nope, nobody got anything. And then they're like, well, I kind of saw. And then they told what they saw and everybody was like, that was so bad. <laughs> it was so vivid. So you want to be a teensy bit curious and don't just poo poo. <laughs> like be a little curious if you get some kind of an image to go, could it possibly be like, why not? Cons does it hurt to consider that possibility? Nope. Right. Or if you get words or what have you. And so this is a way to just kind of be in a place that you're not talking at God, but you're just asking God to fill you and to show you what he wants for you and where he wants to take you. It is very restoring. It gets you off of, and the reason it's on your knees is it gets you off the throne of trying to mat, run the world by yourself mm -hmm. um, and just get connected to this bigger being. So anyway, that's kind of the idea behind this. Um, so we're just asking you this week, just this week, just try it <laughs> each day. If you miss a day, it's God's not mad at you. He's it's not like he didn't need you to do this. <laughs> Like, God just wants to fill you. Like, he's not looking at this by, ugh, what's wrong with you? You mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it doesn't work like that, but this is the old. <laughs> um, yeah, because you it works, right? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I love that. You've seen it, you've seen it. Um, yeah, so it's something just to try it. Worst thing, nothing happens and you wasted 15 minutes a day, <laughs> which I'm sure you never waste 15 minutes during your day at all, watching TV or YouTube or social media or any of uh, those yeah. things. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Candy Crush, there we go. Yeah, so it's worth it, right? It's just a measly 15 minutes just to see if you want something different, try something different. Mm -hmm. So that's a stretch goal. We're gonna do a little middle, a little middle, a little, a little, meditation <laughs> right now before we close out um, anyway so just close your eyes um, and just take a minute right now to think about this being like how vast and big this being of God if there is a God would be it helps me to really get this by thinking about the about nature thinking about oxygen and DNA and the power of the sun and the stars and the planets how wide and vast and complex the universe is And just take in, this being says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. 
thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. And just to take a minute to ask God right now where he wants to take you with a future and a hope. Think of the areas that you've been looking to cisterns, even broken cisterns that aren't working for you. And ask God what it would look like going to him as the fountain. How would it look different in your life to experience that? Father, I feel so grateful for everyone that's a part of this series, that this can be a time of being refreshed and restored by receiving, by opening our hearts wide to receive what you have for us, that you are wanting so much more than whatever we can imagine for ourselves, that you say that you can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Love you guys so much. See you next week. See, wasn't that incredible? So many good things. Hopefully you got your tank full and that you're receiving just from that wonderful teaching. Thank you so much, Pastor Nancy. Hey, and while I've got you here, I'm here to talk a little bit about just the area of financial giving to God. Hey, you're gonna hear some really great things that God has to say about the area of giving. In fact, you may or may not know this, but actually God says that we can test him in the area of finances, right? We can test him in the area of finances. He actually says, he takes it a step further. He says that when we tithe, that he opens the windows of heaven and pours out a blessing so enormous that there shall not be enough room to receive it. Think of how big the heavens are. That's pretty big, right? So one of the things that you may be noticing here, if you're new to Searchlight Fellowship, is you may be joining in person in someone's home, in someone's living room, or you may even be joining online as well. So you may notice that we don't have a physical building where we're gathering. So anything that you offer, any tithes that you give today, actually go straight back into the church where we can actually pour that back into the community. We're not paying rent for a building, so we can actually give without hesitation back into the community. And we want to do more of that. So just so you guys are aware of that. And also on top of that too, is that, you know what? God really wants to bless you in the area of finances, believe it or not. Again, God calls us to test them in this area as well. So if you're worried about, hey, maybe you're paycheck to paycheck, maybe you're worried about debt, maybe you're worried about not having enough, you know what? God actually says that, hey, we can test him in this area, that he pours out a blessing. When we tithe, he'll pour out a blessing, so our own shall, shall not be enough room to receive it. That's a pretty bold statement. And you can grow in this every single week. That's what's incredible. You can grow your faith in the area of giving to God. So there's three easy ways that you can try today. One of those, one of the things that you'll see right now is that there's a QR code that's popping up on your screen. So feel free to pop out your phone. You can scan that QR code, take you to a landing page. You can give an offering, a tithe today as well. Or if you got the mobile app, if you downloaded that a little bit earlier, you can dive right into the heart section and give an offering and a tithe. And you can even automate your giving as well too. Or if you're a little bit more old fashioned like me, if you wanna jump onto the website as well, you can see right behind me, searchlightfellowship.org. You can go into the giving section, give an offering or a tithe today. You can even automate your giving. Hey, three really simple ways for you to give and grow in the area of giving. It just comes down to you trying God now in this. So hey, have a great week one, wonderful time to have you guys and God bless you all.